Uh, hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry going over bi weekly contest 34 uh, count or possible routes. Uh, so, actually, if you look at the co contest time, this was my second fastest time of the four palms. So, it, it, it's a little sad when you get Q2 and Q3. Uh, we have a lot of issues with them, uh, and that's why my performance has been kind of bad. But on this contest, but uh, but yeah, so this one is a little bit or a lot tricky. It, to be honest, though, is just that this one it, for me is more standard, and that is uh, it's dynamic programming. And for this, you just have to you have to practice the number of states uh, a little bit, and I to um to to practice uh figure out the states, and the states is. Um, you know, for for me, the way that I think about these is that in a dynamic programming, um, so one thing about dynamic programming is that things should be a DAG. And what I mean by that is that it's direct, directed, asynchronous, and, well, it's a graph, uh, on an implicit graph, right? And what that means is that usually you're trying to some, find some property so that it's not, there's no cycle. And in this case, um, the first thing I notice is that uh, feel um it can only go down right because you're always using it there's no way to refill uh, i think that was something that i was looking at and obviously it cannot be negative though doesn't i don't know i mean doesn't if you cannot go up it does cannot go back to negative so i don't know why this phrasing is like that but um but because few is always going to be um going down that itself makes sure that the implicit graph is not going to be, uh, there's no cycles, right? And you may think, okay, but, you know, here you go from 1 to ze 2 to 0, and or sorry, 1 to 0 to 1 to 0, right? Like how, you know, that's a cycle. So the the, the way that I would draw the graph is actually, uh, and that's, very often that's what people mean by state, um, but you can also think about a state as a node in a graph, uh, in, in this case, it, uh, an implicit graph imposed by your original graph, right? So, so now instead of, you know, your graph being, you know, 0 to, uh, and given that n is equal to say some number 5, right? Uh, then your graph is going to be 0 to 1, uh, you know, 0 to 2, uh, 0 to 3, oops, uh, dot, 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 right? But now that we come adding a, a dimension called the field, uh, and you know that the field only goes down, the only way that it states, uh, the only way that it doesn't go down is if you go from zero to zero, which we can check for because the, you can, uh, yeah, first you can't stay in the same place anyway. Uh, so we can definitely check for that. Um, or if the locations are the same, which uh, the which the constraints tells you that it has to be distinct. That means that if it's distinct, then there will always be a cost because, you know, there's always going to be a delta, right? So, so yeah, so you may say, okay, well, how, how about this cycle, right? This one to zero to one to zero, right? Um, well, the way that I think, oops, the way that uh, it goes is that, well, the state is actually, let's say few is equal to five, which I think it is for this case. Oh, few is six, right? So few is equal to six. Well, actually, the state is one to six. Uh, where few is a, st a state, it goes to zero, which uh, in this case costs one. Uh, so one five or zero five, one four, zero three, one two, zero one, right? So those are your, your states, and you can see that there are no cycles if you look at the nodes uh, as a combined state. So those are the things that I would look for. And for me, um, finding that these properties allow me to be, okay, this is dynamic programming. And then the next part is just trying to find figure out the um try to figure out um uh what do we call it well for me the next step is try to figure out the the base cases right so if few is equal to, uh, is less than zero you return zero because that means there's no path that uh there's no possible path that can change your zone because few is less than zero and actually this should be Oh yeah, and the, the reason why this isn't equal to zero is because you can actually end at, you know, you can have few is equal to zero, like, and that would give you at least one uh, path, right? So if our current index is equal to uh, our finish index, then we 
that that's one and ending to a path, so we do total plus one. Uh, and then after that, it's just enumerating the possibilities of, okay, now we're at current index location. Uh, the next index is where we want to go next. We check that, well, we can't go that. Um, you know, we can't go to itself. And also it would cause an infinite loop. And then we just recursively go, okay, let's go to that index and then minus the few used. And the few used is just, you know, the delta between the locations. And that's pretty much it. But I, I would say there's a nuance here. So there is, um, so because uh, location sub i could be up to 10 to the negative, or sorry, 10 to the ninth power, uh, which is a billion, I think. Um, this view you go zero may actually be have a lot of negative states, right? Because now uh, if you look at it, let's say you know few is equal to six, and instead of going from one to zero, and the cost is like ten, right? Then, then in this case, um, this would go to zero to negative four, uh, and then maybe maybe there's another path. I'm just like making stuff up, uh, but like two to the five is equal to uh, zero to negative five, and then maybe like a three four. Uh, negative six, right? But we do want all these uh, negative numbers to be in the same state, um, at least for LRU cache. If you're doing uh, C++ or another language, it actually doesn't matter because it doesn't get cached. But if you're doing the lazy Python thing of doing LRU cache, then it will cache all these different uh, fields as different states, um, So, which is not what you want, obviously. So what I did was that I convert all the negative numbers to negative one so that combines them together. So that's kind of a, a, a mini optimization, or but I think it's probably needed. Otherwise, you may get in trouble. Um, so that's a needed uh, optimization for only if you use LRU cache. If you use dynamic programming uh, or memorization in an, uh, another way uh, where you cache me um, where you cache manually, then you might you do not need this optimization. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that's all I have for this problem. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I solved this, I, I, like I said, like in five minutes during the contest, uh, and a lot of it was just reading. So, yeah, you can watch it me solve it live next. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I mean, let's see how far behind I am before I do this last one. And because now it's late. Oh, wow, people are really good. Um, we could see how fast the last one is. Wow, I'm just really bad today. 100. 32 is my possible and just like a lot of penalty, but a lot of issues today, but uh, okay. Uh, Hi, let's see. Just increasing sequences. Can you go loop? Yep. I mean, this is straightforward, I think.
Can we keep going? I guess we can. That's, maybe that is a little, a little bit annoying, actually. Oops, what language am I using? Guess I should test a big case. Nope. <sighs> hey everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think about this format, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, and I will see you in the next contest. Bye-bye. Uh,